trying to be an artist is, you know, very, very difficult right now, especially with the amount of hats you have to wear as an artist. Sure. There's a lot of stress involved and it's very easy to get overwhelmed, you know, just knowing artists, having a lot of friends who are artists, like there's definitely that kind of unifying sense of anxiety um and you know for for some people like occasional hopelessness with it because it's just so difficult Hello, you beautiful music creatives. My name is Mac, the founder of Musician Guidance, and it is my privilege to officially welcome you all to the Musician Guidance podcast. Today, we're joined by Mac Seitao, professionally known as No Shows. No Shows is finding a fascinating niche as a singer-songwriter and frontman by fusing explorations of the inner workings of the mind with a wildly eclectic blend of alt-rock, hip-hop, and funk. Without further ado, it is my honor to welcome Max to the podcast. Max, you're looking great. How are you doing today? You too, Mac. Appreciate ha, ha, it. Well, yeah. <laughs> happy to be here. And I'm happy you're here as well. I'm super excited for this episode, Max. Um, I got a lot of great questions to for you to you know share more about yourself, your music, and all that. But before we get into you know the meat of the podcast, for those that haven't been blessed to come across yourself or your music yet, can you just share a little bit more about your background and what inspired you to get into music? For sure, yeah. Um, so I was definitely inspired by like you know, guitar hero. That was definitely, <laughs> fun. that was, that was my, that was like my road to getting into guitar and thinking it was cool. You know, I, uh, before then, I don't think I had much of an interest in music, but that was like something that triggered it for me. I got good at the game. And then I was like, I want to be able to shred like, like these guys, but like in real life. And then I had like an obsession with it, got really fixated on playing guitar. Um, and I did that for a while. I, I played in some bands with my friends, did some some covers, and pretty soon I was I was like starting to get interested in songwriting. And I, you know, was was doing that with a couple different bands until I finally started to figure out like what what my sound was and mm -hmm. what I was really you know interested in and what what suited you know my voice the best and everything um so it was it was definitely a journey to there like getting into jazz guitar as well and production down the line like later later on like i, I started probably in like fifth or sixth grade like that's when i really started getting into music mm -hmm. um but yeah as i got late like into late high school that's when production became a thing, um, yep. jazz guitar became a thing, and um, right yeah. on. Awesome. Did, did music run in your family, or are you kind of a trendsetter when it comes to it? Uh, my dad always was a bit of a guitarist and a singer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but like, for, for fun, you know, it was a hobby. Couldn't form. beat you in rock band, or uh, couldn't beat you in Guitar Hero, eh? Hey? No, I, I don't. No, <laughs> no, definitely not. Yeah, no, I was... Uh, I was really, I was really into that game. I was, I was playing on the expert level and <laughs> no, I, was, I was definitely obsessed. And right on. I'd be surprised. Yeah. If you could. <laughs> we, right we on. Never, so. You know, you never know. And that's, thank you for sharing about your journey there and how it kind of evolved, you know, as you got into high school and it sounds like you really found a love for songwriting too, in addition to, you know, jazz and guitar and stuff like that. Um, is that kind of like your, your, what you're enjoying most about it now, or are you enjoying all aspects of it? Yeah. I mean, I, I think I enjoy all aspects, but definitely songwriting and production are, are the things that right on. ring like truest to me is like my passions. Um, so it's the thing that brings me the most happiness and and you know you really get to express yourself rather than just um you know have fun playing an instrument it, it mm -hmm. gets gets deeper than that so totally. 100 and one thing i really admire about yourself is you're making music 
with a purpose so many times and especially even with like the rise of ai like you just have people putting out music to put out music for for no reason no real message behind it and with no real purpose um can you can you share more about your music and and how it explores the inner workings of the mind and maybe the uh, ideas or experiences that kind of drive your creative process totally yeah i mean i would say that most of my songwriting kind of revolves around how I'm feeling and, you know, how you're feeling is very tied to the inner workings of your mind, for sure. Like um, emotions and um, fears and whatever it may be, it's, it's mm-hmm. all, it's all tied into the mind. Um, so definitely all of my music kind of ties into that, like introspection and, yeah, just kind of analyzing and I, it wasn't even like I necessarily intended to do it that way at first. It was right. just kind of where my songwriting led me and where I noticed my lyrics were kind of leading me to. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I kind of realized this and from there it, it just became more of a theme because I realized it was what I was writing about anyway. So I, right. yeah. got, deep, I just got deeper into it. Yeah, well, speaking of getting deeper into it, can you tell me how it's kind of evolved over the last, you know, several years? Yeah, um, I think a lot of a lot of the evolution has to do with, uh, you know, the sonics. Um, I think lyrically, it, it's been pretty consistent to a certain degree, maybe with maybe with a little bit more, a little bit more kind of specifics to um myself like a little a little bit more personal mm-hmm. like i think i've gotten over over time more comfortable with you know just getting a little bit more personal and less general with lyrics so i think over the years that's kind of been um part of the evolution um yeah so and then and then sonically um definitely major changes like like kind of leaning more into the rock elements um you know keeping that hip hop kind of feel and edge yeah. but but kind of like if you hear my earlier stuff it's a lot more like hip-hop influenced but i i've been embracing more of the rock and alt rock kind of sounds for for the newer stuff and yeah and you're um, killing it it's amazing thank you thank you absolutely yeah and and i want to touch on that too um because i know it's tough to be vulnerable it's tough to write, you know, lyrics that, that are super near and dear to yourself and releasing that to the world and, and being subject to opinions and criticism and stuff like that. And you mentioned it kind of took you some, some time to get comfortable with that. Have you found that, um, after being able to, to get to a point where you've been able to take that leap and be more vulnerable, that it's actually helped you more to express yourself and get it out there? Yeah, definitely. Like, I found that, like, you know, the more personal, you know, I am, the more real it is. And the more, yeah, you know, I feel, I definitely, it feels good to have it be real to me. And I notice that people resonate with it more when it is real to me. And and people Mm -hmm. really notice that, you know, whether or not, you know, they really know for sure it's, it's you, like, it'll, it'll just have more of that kind of realness to it and that's something i think people feel um 100 so. it, 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 it like it, that that passion that emotion that you know being genuine like that can't be faked so when when it's yeah. portrayed in music yeah that's exactly what kind of grabs you and pulls you into the song and your your music does that you know better than than 99 you know it's, it's some of the best out there it's the most genuine and that's what i really like about it and and it's going back to like the, the I talked about the purpose and also the message. Like you're a strong advocate, you know, for mental health, which um very admirable. I really applaud you for that. I think it's it's so needed in, in the music industry. Um in, in every industry, but especially in the music industry. Can you um, like can you can you just share some some of the meanings behind your, you know, your song? So like portrait, you know, wants and needs. Like just yeah. just dive into some of the meanings of it, and I'd love. I'd personally really want to know kind of more about them. Definitely, definitely, yeah. I mean, I can talk about some of the songs from the EP. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, portrait 
that song is is sort of about how like you know i have the tendency to go into you know relationships no matter regardless of like whether or not it's like romantic or a friendship or something like i i tend to go into these relationships sometimes with assumptions um and you know when when i'm not seeing the full picture i'll, I'll kind of like draw in my own lines and um like create the full picture of, of of a person really before before it's shown to me and you know i think a lot of that has to do with you know kind of the anxiety that i experience where it's like i have to sort of i i feel like i need like this person to be something certain in my mind and like things need to be super clear like without any sort of ambiguity and yeah i feel that with friendships and you know in in the song's case it's like a relationship um like that's sort of what specifically is being painted in the song but yeah it's just about that assumption and having it and then sort of um figuring out like as you spend more time around this person like figuring out that you really were just kind of making assumptions and creating this image of this person but like the longer you spend around them the more you see that that's that was just your own head and yeah you know maybe it's a bit of a cautionary tale um but also it's really just me expressing my experiences with that and yeah um yeah it's sort of what that ties into uh for that song absolutely okay thank you for sharing that would you like to you know share about on the cloud meant it wants yeah. and needs i think it's yeah. i think it's uh, the reason i ask these questions is because like there's kind of when you listen to music like i think you listen for two reasons one is you know just because you want to listen to this you know banging song but the other is like yeah. when you know the meaning behind it it just connects on such like a deeper and more personal level so i'd love to to hear more about uh you know the other tracks totally totally yeah um so on this cloud um that one is sort of about the fear of time passing and i think like as an anxious person i tend to you know worry when when days blur together and time is just moving so quick mm -hmm. you as an anxious person you struggle to stay in the moment a lot of the time um because your mind is elsewhere so the song is sort of like like about that desire and like wishing that you could just stay in in whatever moment you're in for as long as you want without it having to leave you and you know the way i portray it is like as a cloud that you can stay on um and and just like dwell on until you want to hop off of it you know like hop that. So you want to hop off. <laughs> so yeah, that, um, that sort of was what I wanted to write about just that that feeling because I, I do feel that a lot. And I think, you know, as an anxious person, you experience that a lot because, you know, it, you know, it's there's there's a degree of truth to it. It's, it's like time to pass by really quick. Um, and it makes you think about like, what can I do to be more in this moment and you know that ties into mindfulness and other things you know so Absolutely. That, yeah but it's sort of that cloud can be a lot of things for a lot of different people you know and absolutely yeah like that no. um, I, I like that and like yeah like i mean i can relate to that i know many others can listening so when 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 you're releasing music you know, to your fans, are you, how are you kind of hoping that they they receive it and resonate with it? Are you hoping that it's kind of how, like, are you hoping that to, um, you know, music's helping you? Are you hoping you can kind of share your feelings and that it's going to resonate and help those struggling with, you know, anxiety and mental health as well? Totally. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, that's my goal. Like, I think I want to have a certain, I want to reach a certain point where it's like, it's still personal. It's like how I feel, but not so specific and so 
you know, so me that other people can't internalize it and relate it yeah. to themselves. I, I want it to be, you know, something, something that can be applied to other people that have similar experiences to me, even if it's slightly different. Yeah, totally. I want to resonate. And that's, you know, that's part of magnify the mind and definitely part of just the music. You know, it's one of the things I hope like can come out of it for and that other people can feel listening to it well let's let's talk about magnify the mind so in addition to you know i can't even imagine how busy you are putting out all these all these new tracks i know you're working on a lot more um in addition to all of that you've created a mental health hub called mm -hmm. magnify the mind can you tell me more about that yeah so it's it's sort of a community i created that centers around mental health more specifically anxiety because okay. there there is a lot um you know i mean not not that you know it, it can't involve depression or anything it's but definitely wanted to focus on that because anxiety is something specifically that i've struggled with a lot throughout my life and you know a lot of my songs center around it so i i, I did want to create like a solid community based around it. And the idea behind Magnify the Mind is to sort of create, you know, that community where people can feel comfortable talking and sharing their experiences. And, you know, it, it's, it's in the developmental stages for sure. Like down the line, I'm trying to have more pop-up events and things like that um, right where artists can perform and maybe people can speak and share their share their kind of um, stories and their experiences with anxiety. Um, so yeah, and it's trying to tie that in with music and basically, that's the goal. Um, but for now, like what I'm sort of doing with it is, is just sharing my experiences how they relate to my songs and sometimes just even talking about anxiety I experience as an artist for specifically like other artists that have anxiety. Like mm -hmm. I posted something recently about how I deal with stage fright and I'm going to dive deeper into that with some more videos, but you know, I, I just wanted to do that a little bit and set the stage for it and yeah. And, and just kind of have some, some of like my tips and tricks out there for me personally, like, so that people can watch and hopefully, hopefully like benefit from it or find some sort of uh, help from it. Absolutely. And I commend you for doing that because by you, you know, sharing everything, I, you, you're definitely helping others that, that are going through similar, you know, things or, or maybe, maybe something else, maybe not anxiety, but maybe like you mentioned depression and, and just hearing yourself talk open about it, you know, and inspire them to do the same. So I commend you for that. For those that want to get involved and you mentioned it's kind of in the developmental phase for those that want to get involved and, and, and be a part of it and maybe help you continue to grow it, where can they do so? Yeah, so I have uh, an Instagram page for it. Um, I'd say the best way to reach out to me about that is uh, to just DM the page. Uh, it's an open page, so uh, you can feel free to just follow it and message me. I'll I'll definitely respond, and I am very open to you know help in expanding it, and also just open to talking to people. Um, you know who have similar experiences to me as well. So yeah, the, the Instagram page is just called magnify the mind. Um, and you can follow, follow it there. Yeah. Awesome. And we'll have the, the links below. Um, you know, prioritizing mental health is, I know personally speaking to extremely hard at the beginning when I didn't know how to, I didn't know where to start because it's just, it's still not something that's talked about too much. And that's again, why I commend you so much for what you're doing um, and continuing to grow that community. And it's so needed too. Like I know when I got into this business, I wanted to, I was 
trying to do something with mental health as well. And, and I wasn't able to to do, you know, half as much as you've already done, which is again, why I'm um, appreciative on behalf of, you know, you know, others, what you are doing. But one of the things I, I did do was I was, you know, getting data. I was, I was seeing like how big of a problem this was. And when I was running these surveys and talking to artists, I found that over 70%, 70% of music artists at one point in time in their career or their journey or whatever, you're, you know, they're, they're them making music that they struggled with me mental illnesses, whether that was anxiety, depression, or, you know, others. And 70, like that is, it's that's, nuts. it's, it's way too high. And I know personally speaking, what helped me through um, some of the, challenges I was going through was listening to music so the fact that that helped me but knowing that like 70 percent of the people that are helping me are facing their own battles is is tough to tough to swallow are, are you like are there any specific challenges or stressors that you think the music business as a whole is is putting on artists and pressuring them into believing things or anything like that like have you faced anything like that yeah, definitely. I mean, I think trying to be an artist is, you know, very, very difficult right now, especially with the amount of hats you have to wear as an artist. Sure. There's a lot of stress involved and it's very easy to get overwhelmed, you know, just knowing artists, having a lot of friends who are artists, like there's definitely that kind of unifying sense of anxiety. Um, and, you know, for, for some people, like occasional hopelessness with it, because it's just so difficult and you really have to do it all yourself. You have to be your own, you have to be your, your own marketer a lot of the time, your own manager, your own kind of networker. You could list, list 20 things plus, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, your own kind of, you know, your own merchandise salesman, your own whatever. So there's just so many parts to it. And especially now that social media is a thing and everyone's their own marketer, everyone's, mm -hmm. their own, I guess, brand ambassador, so to speak. I mean, being an artist is, is, is kind of creating a, a, a brand for yourself uh, in some ways, especially now. So that can be very overwhelming and you know that's i think um that that can be a serious source of stress for a lot of artists who already you know i i think are more likely to experience anxiety i kind of forgot what the question was because i no guess. no that was that, was, <laughs> that but, was great yeah it was just like the like the like you said like you got to work you know, 20 hats, you got to be a marketer, an influencer, a booking agent, a manager, you have to handle your own merchandise. And, and you know, that was, that was kind of what I was asking about, like, what are the, you know, stressors and challenges that a fan, somebody that listens to your music doesn't know everything you're doing to get to that point um, of being vulnerable in your music too, and, and sharing all that. So no, you answered that. Um, I appreciate the honesty there. Totally. Is there, so obviously creating music, you know, helps you express yourself and helps you um, a little bit, you know, through your anxiety and stuff like that. Are there any other tips, I guess, that, that you can give to, you know, fellow, you know, music artists and also just, you know, fans of music to help them overcome their um, battles with uh, their mental health? Yeah, um, you know, I think one of the one of the major um the major points i would make for like artists who are suffering with you know distress and anxiety is to not you know not be afraid to let others in um and you know you don't have to do it all by yourself you don't have to go on this journey by yourself you know i in one breath i did say you have to be your own this your own that your own everything but i I think it's really hard to actually do that all for yourself. And when it comes down to it, like you look at a lot of the most successful artists, there's usually a team involved of, of people that believe in, you know, what, what, 
this like band is about or whatever it is um mm -hmm. 100%. And, you know i think having other people there to help you and also other people that can relate to what you're going through because they're going through the same thing i think that's like the best way to go about it and that would be like my primary tip for artists that are struggling with that like yeah just finding other people who are willing to either contribute to your vision and team with team up with you or yeah kind of uh, people that believe in your vision as a whole and want to be a part of it that that works too i think that's that's great advice like i don't think i certainly can't name one successful artist that is completely on their own like there's always you know a team behind them whether that is um a manager a booking agent or whether that's friends and family that are their support system that are handing out flyers you know to get them uh you know people for their first gig what, whatever it is it's i think there's a, a narrative around especially when starting out that you have to do it yourself and i get like it's tough with the with funds right like you're not going to be able to bring in somebody when you're not at the point of making money yet necessarily so i get that's hard but that's where it can be relying on like magnify the mind like a community of like-minded people that are there just to support you just to even like share share what's helped them like what you just did something like that like just just speaking just talking to others that's your team that's that's you know who you can build your career with so um because i think that's something i see too i see i see artists too quickly try to pay somebody to be a part of their team and, and you put it perfectly in along you said something like they have to believe in your vision or where your visions align that's so important too it's not just about building a team of of people to have numbers behind you it's it's building a team of those that believe in what you're doing and, and have a similar vision so oh yeah yeah quality over quantity yeah you want people behind you that really believe in what you're doing and yeah. you know that that that's i feel like that really is the only way that you're going to be able to you know deal with mm -hmm. it not the only way but yeah, it's it's really I think it's really important and helps a lot. Um, yeah. yeah, and you know, like we were saying about you know a community like Magnify the Mind helping with that. I I think it is true. Like being in a community like that where there's a lot of artists and you all feel very similarly. Like it's good because people can help themselves by helping each other and. Well said. I think that's you know something really nice about something like that and the art world in general you know mm -hmm. people art. can help themselves while helping each other yeah very well said thank you thank you very very well said i like that thank you man thank you absolutely and um awesome max well I, again i appreciate your 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 just openness here it's it's so genuine and um I mean, I really appreciate that. And, and uh, just to, I know you that you're going to continue to be genuine in your music. And I know you're working on a lot of it behind the scenes. So I want to give you an opportunity now just to share about, and you don't have to, if you, if you can't say some things yet, I totally understand that. But I just want to give you an opportunity to share about, you know, what what's upcoming for no shows. Yeah, yeah, I can totally, I can totally talk about that. Um, so I actually have, a single dropping really soon, um, September 20th. Um, I, I was gonna maybe announce it within, you know, a week of the 20th and sort of give a heads up, but no reason not to shout it out here. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a song called Used To It that I've had in the vault for a while. And, you know, I've been waiting for the right time to drop it. And I thought, you know, why not? We're coming around to the new year here or at least like you know the beginning of the fall yeah so i thought it was a good time to go through with that and i'm very excited about it uh and excited for everybody that that's been listening to no shows 
I'm, I'm excited for everybody that has been a part of that journey to experience it. Um, I have that song dropping and then there's going to be a lot more singles to follow um, and eventually an EP. So right on. Look forward to new music coming soon. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you haven't had the chance to listen to no shows yet, I'm going to link all of their music below because it's truly special and as real as it gets. Um, I've actually listened to to used to it. Um, I, I was lucky enough to get a little early, early preview of it too. And it's a banger. So if you are listening in September 20th, it is dropping. I'm super excited for the music video. I know you have coming too for it. So a lot, a lot of exciting things. Um, so definitely tap into no shows. Max, that's pretty much bringing us to the end of the episode here. I just want to give you one final opportunity to, you know, share anything else uh, you would like to. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess uh, thank you to everybody that's been listening and riding with no shows and yeah, stay stay tuned. A lot more, a lot more coming and a lot more shows, new music. Stay tuned and thank you. Stay tuned and tap in to no shows. I'm gonna have links again below to magnify the mind and no shows is personal profiles as well as you know their music on um, the major DSPs. So you can tap in and listen to some great music with a awesome purpose behind it. In the meantime, Max, that is going to conclude this episode. Until next time, I've been Mac, that's been Max, and you've been amazing. Take care and keep making music.